Hello everybody and welcome to the Healing Place. Woo! Uh, Martina Elbert here and Joanne and Jack with Plenty Canada. Um, and we're going to tell you a little bit about the Healing Place um, space today as well as the We Walk the Path Together programming that we're super excited about um, as well as just provide an overview of what the day is going to look like today. Uh, so please don't mind the um, vehicle noise in the background that's going on. We are currently on site at the Healing Place, which is right off of the road, um, off of the highway, County Road 22, to be certain. <laughs> um, uh, but it was actually because this property was donated by a very generous um, farmer. Um, who donated a large piece of property um, that used to be an agricultural field and is now the Healing Place. So here we are. Um, the Healing Place is located on Algonquin and Mohawk territory. And uh, it's, a, it's a really special occasion that we're about to mark this Thursday at 10 a.m., the one year anniversary of the first planting of this reconciliation-based uh, tree plant. So why did we decide to kick off the We Walk the Path Together uh, program uh, on, at this location? And the reason is, it is the result of a remarkable collaboration uh, that happened amongst uh, Mohawk, Algonquin, and non-Indigenous folks from a variety of organizations. And it, uh, it is a great example of, of things that can be accomplished through collaboration by working together in what is called ethical space. So what is ethical space? Um, ethical space can be defined as a framework, um, a space, a place for uh, multiple cultures to come together, uh, work together within one space, um, and it's referred to as ethical because there isn't one culture that dominates the other, um, or uh, the learning isn't um, justified or led by one particular culture or way of knowing. Um, each has equal footing uh, together. Yeah. And why is it important? Yeah, it's really important these days because, you know, so many of us are used to working in what is actually predominantly a Western way of doing things. And Frankly, it means that we're missing out, especially if we're doing that while working cross-culturally with Indigenous people. So, yeah, this is a this is an awesome framework um, that the folks in this project have been doing a lot of learning about through action, and others have as well. And we're really excited through this new program to be able to share with you some of that learning. So um, we're going to be hearing more from the project partners um, as the day goes on about ethical space, um, particularly in regards to the healing place. And then over the months to come leading up into March, we're going to be having a, a series of talks from leading experts in things like the histories you never learned about in school the initiatives that have already helped to set the stage for what's to come and possibilities for the future, as well as some lessons learned from uh, recent initiatives to, to work in ethical space together. So it's gonna be really exciting. We're gonna have each month um, uh, a talk and discussion and we're really looking forward to having you join us over the course of the program for that. So without further ado, um, we're going to wrap up this little video segment and encourage you to go and grab yourself a nice mug of tea or a snack um, because very shortly the actual uh, event will begin to be live streamed. Uh, we are starting, we are starting exactly at 10 o'clock with a drumming ceremony and um, that is the sort of thing that is not to be recorded. So at around 10.20, this live stream will indeed go live for you all and you'll have a chance to hear from the lineup of speakers, but also get a very special tour at the end and speak with some of the partners as Martina highlighted. Uh, we're gonna start with the uh, words before all else. Um, 
I'll I'll follow and uh, we'll just uh, go from there and rely on Ron to give us our marching orders. And so I'll pass the mic over. Oh. Negi ona doni kono hodu izwa da hosius ne di gatas no hodu ne ne doana do ko hodu kari hodi to gadi ne ga ni ile to doana holado no hodu na ikia da hosius te suba wena das no ni salade na ko gas ko doa wena ni ga ni ko ha su to doana holado on ko su to no ja ai lex ko no doana to ni ko ga da ro no ni salade ni ko de ni ho te ni ko ani ko na ne ga di ona te ga ni ha to no doa ile ne ikia ni sta ha ne ni ko doa na ko salah ko ko ha ne ni ko shi te ko salah ko ni doa na do ko ne ni ska te ni ko se ko ne te ni ji ga ko te ha ga no ho to ga ha wi te sko na doa na te ni to ga di ne ni ga ni ile no ni sala de ni ne di ki no ho la di ki ni sta ha jo ho ja de ka de ni ho te ki ni ko ni ko na ne ni ona te ni ot ne no doa ile o ne no lo ene da ne no lo ve lo e ka ya de ke ti ka ne ka le ni Nene jini o asta dini o ni tika ni kalu ni ni kani kani ni kani atala so ni kani ni kani atalo wa nuts yut ne ka te ki nai kwa hata na wat nai kwa ta ni laksa kwa ngo ha te toki ni to wa ila kwa kwa sko to wa wenu ni kwa ni kwa ni tino ho la ha te nene ki jika ni kalu ni jo ho ja ha te ki se kwa ni kwa hata na wat ta ka te ni ho te ki ni kwa ni kwa na nai ka di wa o ni lo wenu da ta ni ho ye lo na lo wa ila aga yon te ki o ni nene ki a te kun jake nu ni kun tiki ku di talo ho te ki ka ni kalu ni Ne o kia ke te kuto tafo, so o kia ke o ni te kuto ni iji, ne subawi ata na asin o ni kwa te hukai as. Sa te yut na ho te ne tona te ka wahaki, ne ne na i kia te gana no ni sula te sko na tona u te ni. Ka te ni o te ki ni kwa ni kona. Ne ka te wa o ni te ni ho ye lo lo ni tao, ne so te ka wa jo hon ja te ni. Ne to na te hukai kia te wa yake. Ne ne o kia ke te ni jokwe la ke no kwa te zi. Ne o ni to na te hukai kwa te ka kwa no ka ni. Nene ka di tani eji, nene asu ni kwa da nozo, nene ka yon tosama. Nene ka di ezi doa yate gen dosa anzo doa do hukai ke jo hon jabi nji kwa yata hini lan sta hon jene jo hon jade ni. Nene yos ka tsu tini sego za kwa tsu ni hake, nene ya hae na kung ka ta de hon do hukai ake. Nene de jure hon ya do nuni sila ade kwa gos ka di doa hwek nuo ni kia gini ni kwa hla asu mo. Nene de jo ki ni ho la ade nene ka yon tosla, ka di ni ho te ki ni kwa ni kwa na. Nene ka di wa o ni lo wela nene ya ki ngu haa kai doa doa yang ta hukwa jo hon jade nene lo wena dao. Nene ngon ni gong sako te kao doa na to hukwa nene ka ina doa na shi nyo de nene ka liyo. O gya ke nene ka yot daa so gya ko nene ka yot doa no sa. Te sako ka di wa te ni ji ti ka na nene dae na hodo su kwa hawi. Nene ngye jo kya te gen o gya kya da naa sa su na te kao o gya kya o ni a chalo ni. Nene ka di di wa na nene dae ji ni ji te ki no ho la ade o ni ho lo lagu ho haa di a te ho da sa. Nene oske no hodo ni osa no hodo, nene de jake no hola hodo, ji sega ne jake ni ko hola kes, nene de jake ni ko hola kes, nene de jake ni ko hola kes. Toka de nai ke ni e no ni sula hodo, kwa gwa skadi doa hoi no ni ke ni ko hola kes. Nene de jake no hola hodo, nene ko ndi leo, kade ni ohtek ni ko hola ni ko hola. Nene ka di wa o ni tonu ko adi no hola wa elo, aga yon de ke johon ja deni, nene doa na do hoko, nene ka de ka guira ge ogura e su. Nene e los nate ko ti hanyo, nene ka di wa nene ata hadi so na ge hadi. O ni ata hadi sa tsun sa ge hadi o ni. Nende jo ki no ho la ade di na di ki ka na la ge sego jo hon ja ade na di jo ki no ho. Na di jo ki jo ki no ho. Di jo ki no ho pa. Yo suka tsite ni sego ne te ni jo la di li hoa i te la hoa ke no ho ade sa gawa yin sa gawa yin yin sa ane sa gawa yin yin daas. Nende jo le ho ni ade no ni sala ade gwa gwa suka di doa hoi no ni ki a gini ni go hla su ho. Nende jo ki no ho la ade nene o gula su ho jo hon ja ade ka di ni ho te ki ni gwa ni gwa na. Nene ka di wa o nene nua nende jo ki no ho la ade. Nene ka di ka di tong sa la ake jo hon ja ade. Nene jo kwa ji sta deni no gwa di wa di no ge su. Nene yo suka tsi deni yo sego ne te ni jo di ni ko ha la kis. Nene ko njo hukwa nene ke ni ni ko ha la su. O ka di na yao ne nene dan ta ka hawi ta hukwa sko na ju doa nuk te ni. Nene ka di to nene jo ke ni e nua ni sa la ade. Gwa gwa suka doa wa nua ni ke ke ni ni ko ha la su. Nene o ni ho ande ya te ho da su. Nene ko hati ka gwa na a gwa tsi ni ho su no ade. Nene ka di ka no hoa duong si yin doa di ni te nene ka di ka di tong sa la ake jo hon ja ade ka di ni ohti ki ni gwa ni gwa na. Nene ka di wa o ni tunu gwa di di ti ka lo hi ade o ni ju doa di ni gwa hae la ti. Nene di jo gwa ka na lag, nene ju ni ohti on haki. 
Nada de orar nada no nosso lado, não é nem o rei, vai botar na fé, não é nem o bom não ouco. Lá o outro dia se que não deu tudo junto, aí foi nem que tudo nem. Na cada dia não joga o bom não ouço a coisa nem, de cada dia se que não gosta ninguém. Na cada dia não nem o que se lado, na cada dia o outro foi nem dos outros o outro não joga o outro quando não pode ir. Na cada dia não é o único que não joga o que isso agora gosta com só que a galera não é nem que ninguém não diz o não tudo nem, ou nem se não diz o não tudo nem não ouço tudo o outro dia. Foi nem que nem não nem o que se lado. Pernah kat diri hot friend dua kan agak suka diri hot sama si Isa gua kat tujuh kat ni pun, nana si ni ni gua hot gua ikut kat dia nana skana, nana jujur diri hot sunji nana jujur diri orang ni dah. Pernah kat diri hot friend nana kat surat, tu kat dia nayo tu kini gua ni gua lah dah ni tu. Jimmy Witch, uh, Nick, uh, my brother, reminding us of uh, the importance of gratitude to uh, all of creation. Um, when we uh, set our minds and hearts there, uh, good things can happen. Uh, uh, a few uh, quick comments, uh, maybe sharing the history. Uh, how this uh, place uh, came to be um, and I'm, I'm sure that uh, Chris and Abraham have a few uh, in the Yukon and one of the organizers Curtis Spur and uh, Chris he didn't make it today did he no um, anyway Curtis wanted to offset <clears throat> the, the uh, impact, the carbon footprint that was created by traveling there. I wanted to plant some trees somewhere, somehow. Um, ended up calling me about it, and then uh, I called Chris, and uh, uh, Chris helped find a place. Um, there, uh, and then that evolved into, uh, I knew that Forest Ontario had a reconciliation Reconciliation Tree Planting Fund and wondered if they were interested and spoke with Rob, who I see in the Western Door, uh, Rob Keen, the Executive Director, about it. Uh, OPG uh, was brought into the circle. Um, and uh, earlier than all of this, I skipped uh, past uh, uh, Abraham and Akwasasne because in the Eastern Ontario First Nation Working Group, bring these kinds of issues together. I think that's actually where it went from uh, me to Chris to there, and then uh, to the other partners. Um, and the more we talked, the more we felt that the, the tree plant should re reflect our cultural traditions. Uh, Chris has touched on that. I'm gonna leave uh, because Chris did a lot of the design work, but it came out of conversations uh, with um, uh, Abraham, uh, Chris, myself, and others in terms of reflecting those uh, cultural values. Um, and uh, uh, the, there have been other partners, and of course the Ontario Woodlot Association, the uh, Upper Canada District School Board, uh, and others that I'm probably going to, to forget. But uh, the important thing is, is that the partnership has uh, reflected a lot of uh, sector interests, education, um, energy, uh, forestry. And so we've come together in two-eyed seeing. Uh, two-eyed seeing, the way I'm using it is that uh, we, we brought Western science and, and uh, traditional knowledge systems together here. Um, I also feel that it reflects our early um, gathering that is of, uh, well, really, uh, I, I feel it reflects the dish with one spoon, which uh, is the largest treaty there ever was and predates European contact. And uh, in there are three principles associated with it. Take only what you need. And even then, the second principle is make sure you've left some for others. And uh, perhaps most importantly, you keep the dish clean. So that is how we feed ourselves from this uh, beautiful uh, Mother Earth, Jojo Aki, 
in Algonquin. Um, and uh, I'm rec recognizing Jingwei Daganuk, all of creation, that uh, uh, you do so uh, mindfully, and you do so with a good heart and mind, and do so humbly. Uh, in fact, that's how the arrangement uh, through uh, early treaties, including uh, the Treaty of 1764, um, the agreement to uh, share the land uh, was done uh, accepting the responsibility associated uh, with natural law. And, um, and part of that agreement uh, included the covenant chain in, in the dish with one spoon. Um, much more to say on that, but there's uh, there's a lot more to share. So um, I'm I'm happy to uh, one on one or whatever whatever works. Um, so I'm just uh, I'm going to pass pass. Uh, well, I guess I got to pass the mic to Rhonda, who then passes another mic. <laughs> uh, and either yeah, maybe Abraham. We'll just kind of we'll do our alternate. Uh, mic passing here. Sego sego kwego, delong shate yungyats. So hi, my name is Abraham Francis, and I am Mohawk from Akwazasne, and serve as the Environmental Services Manager at Mohawk Council of Akwazasne. Um, and I joined this group. Um, and it's just flourished um, since we started. And the healing place uh, really was a, a celebration of our cultural connection to this place um, and the shared space. So there's a lot of intention behind this design and where the trees were planted. Um, that is a reflection of both Algonquin and Haudenosaunee um, biocultural connections to place and our values and how they're so intertwined with each other. And specifically, the healing place was created um, to address the, I guess, the, the history, the traumatic history that exists between uh, Canadian Canadians and First Nations peoples, but also expanding that to think about the healing that is necessary with the land. Um, everyone hurts from that pain that was generated and we continue to have to deal with that and heal and so the space was created for people to tell stories to build community um it's 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 so much more than i i ever thought it would be and really what i what it for me what it was inspired by is grief um and how grief can manifest in our lives and and cause anger and cause of a myriad of other problems in your life if you don't process them process that grief and move through it and that's why i'm so grateful to my culture and to my community um, because we have tools available to us in order to process our grief we have protocols we have ceremonies and i'm really appreciative that onya has joined us today to open this space um, with some ceremony to clean ourselves off, to, to wipe our eyes, to wipe our ears, clean our ears and our throats so we could see clearly, uh, so we could hear clearly um, and speak clearly. Uh, because as I have understood grief, or as it's been described to me, um, is that your fire gets scattered. Um, and when your fire scattered, the smoke fills your eyes, your ears, your nose, and you can't, you don't you don't experience life the same again um, until you t go through those processes of healing and I've definitely learned a lot about grief in these past couple of years and that journey and the dangers that it can present in your life if you don't process it so <clears throat> with this last year um, residential schools um, unmarked graves being in at the forefront of news and in the faces of and a reminder to our communities, something that we've always known and that we've talked about, but that it became so in everybody's face with um, Canadians becoming more aware of this history that affects our people and continues to affect our people from the intergenerational trauma that has impacted us. And we're still here. 
we're still healing. Um, it takes time. We, we have to be patient. And when I was on my way up here, I was thinking a lot about what this meant to me and um, what it what really connected for me was this poem I read um, by Abigail Echohawk, um, who who said who wrote when they buried the children what they didn't know they were lovingly embraced by the land held and cradled in a mother's heart the trees wept for them with the wind they sang morning songs their mothers didn't know to sing bending branches to touch the earth around them the creator cried for them the tears falling like rain mother earth held them until they could be found now our voices sing the morning songs with the trees the wind light sacred light sacred fire and sure they are never forgotten as we sing justice and for me like that really spoke to what would this place represents that healing that reconnection um what the land represents for our people and can represent for all of us and i hope that the healing place can inspire um, a change in perspective for everyone a reconnection with all of our relations that these are our relatives that we're planting this is our the relatives that we're taking care of and that we are taking care of each other in this process and for me i was really <laughs> i still don't know if i believe in reconciliation and i'm okay with that um because for me reconciliation has to come with action it has to come with movement so i hope you carry that with yourselves today um, with this moment to do something to say something to speak up and um, be there for our people as we go through these times so now I appreciate everyone that is here all the partners that made this possible all the years and many many meetings that Rhonda helped coordinate and helped us get our ideas together and actually manifest this place and I'm just so appreciative of the kindness and patience this group has greeted me with um, and understanding. And so with that, Tukmingo, yeah. Thanks, Abraham. That was uh, wonderful. Um, uh, it's been a long, a long journey doing this, and it's been a very unique one. Um, I something that we had been talking about over the years probably 20 years now we've talked it between ourselves about doing something larger in our group and then uh, this just happened to fall all together really quickly and it, it happened amazingly because we all work so willingly together to do this um, you know the design is 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 pretty simple it's it's a generic design that uh, follow most first nations almost anywhere in the world you go we have these similar things of the four directions um, in our grandmother teachings our grandfather teachings the connection with the land so we can't just make one thing fit all and that's one of the mistakes people make is they think oh well all First Nations are the same well we're not so with this we had to find something that made us common made it the connection between our communities and that's why we chose the species we did um, and, and it, you know, it's not an easy task as people think it is. It's, it's, it takes time and it takes coordination and willingness to work together. And I think our group really, really did a, a tremendous job. So thank you to all of our partners, to South Nation. Uh, they were willing enough to just let us run with this and, and go ahead and do it. So if it wasn't for their openness, you know, this wouldn't have happened. So we would have planted trees, but it wouldn't have been this type of project. Uh, it's our neighbor who uh, donated the land to us. Um, it's a unique piece of property. This is uh, the high point in this area. This is where we would have settled our communities. Uh, the river is just to the to the west of us here, not too far. So this is the type of area that if you would have to just scrape down probably 12 inches, you would still see the old fire pits where our, our people were. So we were here in the past and it's nice that now this area is coming back and it's going to stay natural. It's going to come back to nature and we're still going to have a footprint here for our people uh, to remember that remember them and uh, to remember the the ones coming up so the ribbons you see those were tied for the 215 children that were first identified um, 
unfortunately we didn't do more we didn't have enough time to do more and enough space to put all the flags up we should have but that's to represent those those children that were lost and never came home now they get to come home so and that's it's a perfect timing for this to have this event to happen like this that we have a spot that any of the children that were from these areas they now have a space to be and we can remember them all forever so uh, with that, I, I just want to thank all our partners and thank everybody that's come out to help today and the previous years. And it looks like the weather's held off for us, so I'm thankful for that as well. And I want to thank, you know, our traditional opening we had in the centre this morning. It's so important for us to reconnect with each other. These lands we stand on were both Haudenosaunee and Algonquin. So we overlapped each other in many, many, many miles. It wasn't just a straight line like a county line. So. We utilized all the way down through New York State. They utilized all the way up into Ottawa. So, you know, when we look at this, it's really significant to have this this partnership here on this land. So, it's it's wonderful that we could do all this. Well, thank you. Bujou, Ani, Kwekwe, Sego, Wache, Happy Jenamin Wandam, Jaya Yango Manangom. I'm really happy to be here today. And um, I, uh, I'm helper squaw base to uh, Thomas. And um, I'll introduce myself in a traditional way, which is Knepa Witu Zawi Mashkwa Indigu, Palandish Nikas, Muzim Dodam. Um, Summerstown in Dunjiba. And uh, when I go with Thomas, uh, Thomas is from uh, Moose Factory, residential school survivor, he'll be speaking. And he always asks for us to sing a song. And this song originates from Moose Factory. And uh, the words Nutawinan uh, Wichinan, which means uh, our grandfather, please help us, our grandfather, help us. And um, yeah, so I'll start with that song and uh, I'll pass the, the mic to uh, Thomas and uh, we'll go from there. So miigwech and I'd like to thank everyone that helped organize this event and uh, what, what's happening and uh, coming together as one people. It's, it's just incredible. So uh miigwech. Anyone else? You, the song is not hard to learn. If, if you feel like you're singing some of the vocal lines, please go ahead. Don't be shy. Okay. 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 Now 
Pace, pace, mette che non ha avuto un caso, ma sono due tempi. Che c'è con il scaglione, se mangi a becciao, mi gatti a mahak, mi tavi che siamo in tu. Ova che stia a mahak, mi tocca a me, come ci sono i tavoli, non ha avuto. Pace, pace, minus. Ma si spogli di te, pace, mi ha avuto un caso, che si ha avuto un caso, che si ha avuto un caso. Alla mensane, o calite bacio benano. Ute, opta mai minasen. Mi gotch wes gotch o washian. O calga ya kaituta o kuyan. Mi gotch agni tagi seven and to anochota ni kuyan. I'm so honored to stand here in front of you. Not only the survivor, but being there for many many, many years ago, in 1953 to 1964, in residential school. I have 17 grandchildren today, and three great-granddaughters. It's beautiful to be here. I have a beautiful grandkids. They walk this way, up, this way, they follow my footsteps, the fourth generation. They learn about the planning. They respect the land, the medicines that we have on this earth. They collect that and they show it to me. And you make tea for me, they say. Many years that I walk this way, I've been sober almost 40 years now. I've been 74 for two years now. I don't know what's the number next. <laughs> but it's really thankful for these young people and uh, that did all this work for us. All these plannings, it's our medicine. When I heard they discovered the un, discovered a great red sack across Canada, it really hurts. For me, go, went to Fort Albany, St. Anne Catholic School, and Fort George, Quebec, for many of years. Of all those years, in that 10 years, Three of them never came home with me. Three good friends of mine in the island of where, I'm, where I was from. It really tricked us. I know they're in a good place where they are. They're in a good place now. <coughs> when I hear that, I took my thick back home. stay above, you have a chow. I take a little bit of food out by the fire. Yep, again. There's many more to be found. But the ones I hold tobacco and the food, the feast, I put in the fire. My child, you've been found. We could hear them whispering voices in my dreams. Five of my sisters went to a residence school and two of my brothers were all here. I want to thank you all for your support for this plantation. It's a good medicine. When you plant that tree, think about those ones. It's for them and also for yourself, that healing. Take care of yourself. Take time to learn this seven grandfather teaching and the seven stages of life. If you don't know, don't be shy to ask questions. We go all those years, me have a chow. Stay among me have a chow. I always use that tobacco and ask that favor to be listened to. That's what I did for many of years of my healing. It's not over. I get triggered for many of years. I see things on TV, I get triggered. How are young people really get molested or hurt? I get really triggered. I feel that. If you feel the pains, that's enough hurting your kid, other kid, other young ones, other teenagers. 
your partners. I felt that pain. I never had my kids when they were growing up. I just listen what they need to say. I just listen what they need to say. Sometimes they offer that tobacco to me. Even my own kids do that for me. Pray for those young ones. I love my grandkids a lot, more than every of my great granddaughters. They're going to go, that's enough hurting each other. That's enough backstabbing each other. They're going to go, that's enough. Let's all be family here, or in a place where you, where you go. In a place on this earth, Kutaki Gawi Kaski, Anaga Chistok. Kishalamunquang, Nishik El Nilian Yunque Kishwik. Nita Shinzi, Hui Shopaka, Ninonje, a Lapawi Lakawi, Ninangwa Moloch, Kwa, Ni Unkum Lapawi. Hello, everyone. My name is Sam White Eye. I come from El Lapawi Lakawi, or Delaware Nation at Moravian Town. I'm Lenape. I'm Turtle Clan. I'm a matriarch leader. Um, in this capacity, I am an Indigenous leadership uh, specialist with Carolinian Canada, um, and I come from a different territory. This is my first time in this territory, and I am honored to be here. When I was approaching this territory and then driving through it, you know, three eagles came down and greeted me. No, I was joking, but um, my spirit was excited because, again, this is new for me, and to be able to come here and be here and and represent my people um, and uh, bring myself here in a good way I was I was humbled and and, and happy to be here and um, I had a day yesterday um, I went to Ottawa for the first time and I went to the Parliament Hill and I looked at it and I stood there and I looked and and in the center there they have um, a spot for a fire and all around that center and then down the way there was um, there was items and shoes and, and drawings and stuff for the children and then along the way there was all those shoes and it was really heavy to be there there was medicines there that were there and 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 orange shirts and and it was heavy to be there and and I had to go in and walk it. I had to. I wanted to see. And so I, I'm walking around and taking my time, taking it in. And, you know, there was this woman and she was sick. And she was, she was walking around the shoes, talking. And I thought she was talking to herself, but I don't think so. She was, she was talking to the shoes, to the children. And, and when I left, you know, I got really sad. All that, that energy in those items that were left there, that grief. You know, I was looking for smudge and I, I didn't bring my smudge on this trip, but there was no healing there. There was just grief. But this space is different. You know, this space is, is from the land. This space has medicines. <clears throat> this space we can come to and know that we're going to be taken care of by the land and by the folks caretaking and stewarding it. We need spaces like this for healing, to come together, to reconnect between nations. This space brings me hope. I need spaces like this. The territories need more spaces like this. And so for everyone that coordinated this, that this was just an idea and now come to fruition, I am 
you know, so grateful to be able to do that ceremony this morning and bring back a way that our people used to reconnect and come into these territories was really important for me. So thank you. Um, I think that's all I need to say today. So, Anishik. Good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Sarah. I'm a member of the Algonquin Justice Agathnagon and the Munsee Delaware, and I helped to design the children's garden that we're going to be planting today. Um, and I work for Plenty Canvas. That's how I became a part of the project. Um, but the main theme of the garden is uh, butterflies. It's shaped like a butterfly. We selected the plants uh, to attract pollinator species. And part of the reason for it is it's just a really natural choice for this area, but butterflies are also associated with childhood and transformation. And so when we were um, planting this area and we're kind of coming up with what we wanted, um, when it comes to healing, part of that is transformation, transformation and you're transforming grief into healing. Um, and so to kind of add to that idea, um, butterflies seemed like a really natural choice. Um, and it also seemed like a really good choice for an area to welcome children. Because children, I find, are like really excellent examples um, of healing. They really know how to um, ha have and manage both joy and sadness at the same time. Um, and what better way to remember the children that we've lost than by thinking about future generations. Um, so when laying out the plants, I laid it out kind of from the perspective of a child. So the, the walkways are, are narrow, so there's lots of little nooks and crannies to get into. Um, there's edible foods like strawberries, which are also a children's medicine. Um, and they're just kind of within easy reach for kids, so that was really the main driving force. Um, so I hope everyone um, can come together and enjoy that space in the future, and that it'll be there for a long time for everyone to share. Thank you. step back for just a second so I'll take the opportunity to just um, acknowledge and thank a few individuals who were able to attend um, for us this morning so standing towards the western gate I'd um, like to thank Evan Cranshaw from um, MP Steve Clark's office for attending today on behalf of Minister Clark um, and I'd also like to thank uh, councillors Hugh Cameron and John Hunter for attending on behalf of Edwardsburg Cardinal Township. I'd like to offer John a chance to uh, bring greetings from the township if you'd like to make your way across, John. All of our partners are wishing now that they were on this side of the circle. What a privilege and an honor it is to be here today among our First Nations brothers and sisters and the fellow members of the community to bring you greetings from Edgersburg Cardinal. It's such an honor to stand in what I believe is such a holy place to use and I believe will be for the rest of our fellows in this community. I was honored to be a member of a, of a council of all our members that took it so serious to establish October 30th for the day of reconciliation and remembrance and acceptance of the past that we aren't proud of. But we are proud of being able to be through South Nation and the partners to be accepted as a place to establish this holy place. It's in such a 
a place to me represents the correction of history. Being this location right here, a number of years ago, was one of the largest sawmill operations in eastern Ontario, where we were taking down trees. Now we're putting back trees and bringing the earth back. So thank you very much for all the work you did here. The township is very honored to have it within her boundaries. And we wish you all the success and all the goodwill that can come from us to you. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Bill Smurl, and I'm the past chair, South Nation Conservation Authority. I'm being replaced. So I'm, I'm representing, and I have the honor and pleasure of representing the South Nation Conservation Authority Board of Directors. This is a very special place. This is a very special day, and this is a very special event. One of the things that I think that's important for all of us is to learn more about history, to be educated, to share, and to understand the meaning of family and that we are one big family. You're also extremely interested in history, and I'm going to refer to my notes and cover a few historical notes that I think may be of importance. As some of you are aware, South Nation is an environmental agency that works on behalf of its partner organizations and I might say that South Nation exists by developing and working with partnerships. That is so important to what we do and how we are successful. We're in Eastern Ontario and we deliver these environmental services and we're focused in the city of Ottawa, Prescott Russell counties, Sermont, Dundas and Glengarry and Leeds Grenville. We are here today on one of SNC, South Nation Conservation's recently acquired properties in the township of Edward, Edwardsburg Cardinal. The property is 89 acres, it was acquired in August 2019 through Canada's Ecological Gifts Program. As a member of the Ontario Land Trust, South Nation Conservation is approved to accept donations of land through Canada's Ecological Gifts Program, which can provide significant financial benefits to donors. On average, SNC receives about 50 acres of land per year donated, and they, we, it's added to the nearly 13,000 acres we own in the area that's mainly forests, wetlands, and some land that is a little more open and is grasslands. As well, South Nation manages over 20,000 acres of community forest in Eastern Ontario, including the Stormont, Dundas, and Glengarry County Forest, which is managed on behalf of those United Counties. South Nation uses donated lands to protect natural features, improve forest cover, ensure healthy and safe waterways, and provide public recreational areas. This property is significant because its grasslands are home to several species of at-risk species, and thinking particularly of the bobolink, the eastern meadowlark, and the gorgon crescent butterfly. It's also adjacent to a significant woodlot where it will be ideal for us to plant more trees and property as time goes on. And as we announced last year at our public gathering, this property will also be a place of healing and reconciliation known as the Healing Place. We thank our First Nations and environmental community partners for the opportunity to gather here today on the traditional lands of the Algonquin and the Mohawk First Nations to travel on a journey towards reconciliation and healing. And as I finish, I say, 
education and learning and sharing is so important. And at events such as this, I learn so much. I get so many details and I'm always pleased to hear them and know more about our history. Thank you all for being here and continue the project. Thank you, Bill. And I'm going to call in the last of our few partners that are involved with the project to say a few words. So if Rob, John, and Matt want to make their way towards me. Thank you, Rhonda, and good morning, everybody. Um, my name is Matt Mulvihill, and I represent Ontario Power Generation this morning. And uh, I just want to say and echo, you know, what many have said this morning. What a privilege and a pleasure it is to be here today. It's an honor, and uh, I'd like to acknowledge that we are on the traditional lands of the Haudenosaunee and Algonquin people, and we're here to learn today. We're here to contribute, and I think that. Uh, OPG is a proud sponsor of this event, both last year and this year. Um, as, the, as the title indicates, it's a place to heal. It's a place to, you know, give back, uh, planting uh, these, these plants, learn about their significance, learn about the medicines they provide. It's also a chance this year to remember the children. So the garden that's being planted today the Truth and Reconciliation Initiative that's that's been ongoing and uh, it's not just one day it's it's every day that we should carry that with us and again I'm just here to to listen uh, I want to thank all of the, the people here today that are you know here to share their culture and their insights so we're here to learn we're here to contribute and again we're proud to be part of this initiative I'd also like to thank South Nation Conservation Authority for putting on this tremendous event. Forest Ontario, Plenty Canada, and all the other community partners. Uh, it's a true testament to all different corners of the community and surrounding communities coming together to do some good. So kudos to everybody that was involved. And on behalf of OPG, I'd also like to acknowledge my colleague who's here with me today, John Santa, who's been part of the working group for the healing committee. So John's been an active uh, contributor, uh, along with many of the, the speakers here this morning. So I certainly would like to acknowledge uh, his efforts. And, uh, and I think that's everything I have to say this morning. So again, I hope everybody has a good day. And, and I just want to say how pleased I am to see so many people from not only the partnerships, but all of the surrounding communities, the municipality, you know, the, uh, the various indigenous communities. It's, it's wonderful to see everybody together. So I think we're all going to collectively do a lot of good today. And again, I just want to say what an honor it is to be here. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is John Pino. I'm uh, currently the executive director of the Ontario Woodlot Association and the Eastern Ontario Model Forest. And I'm truly honored to be here today. I feel I have so much to learn. And this is this is helping me on a personal journey to, to understand and to better appreciate what uh, what our history has been and the painful aspects of it and what we can do to move forward to make things better, hopefully. And I think we can. I'd just like to acknowledge uh, the two presidents of our organizations here today. Tony Bull, president of the Eastern Ontario Model Forest, and Paul Robertson, president of the Ontario Woodlot Association. We're, again, very honored to be here. Um, one, one of the things that's going on is we're merging as organizations. And in my job, I've inherited so much uh, very interesting and, and enjoyable things to be a part of. And this certainly kind of came along and surprised me. And I was happy that I could, could be a part of uh, the committee 
whenever I could make the phone calls and the Zooms and, and, uh, and help to, uh, to contribute in any way possible. But it is truly a wonderful event. It's, it's uh, meaning, I think, will, will be with me as I drive along um, home later on this week and uh, think more deeply about it. But um, it, it's, it's something we need a lot more of. We need to have uh, these sorts of events and these sorts of beautiful and, and wonderful places so that we can remember better and understand better and, and return to our to our, our need to be more integrated with, with the Mother Earth and, and the land. So again, on behalf of the Eastern Ontario Model Forest, the Ontario Woodlot Association, thanks for letting us be a part of this beautiful ceremony and uh, have a good day, everyone. Yes, good morning. Uh, <clears throat> my name is Rob Keene. I'm the CEO of Forest Ontario. I feel very, very, very privileged to be here today and extremely humbled as well. As has been said to, by a few folks, this is a place to tell stories and to heal and to learn from those stories. And I'd like to, to share with you a story um, just quickly. Uh, my wife and I were in Northern Ontario, uh, Canada Day 2020. <laughs> and um, we were in a very remote lake and we were, I ran into a little bit of a medical issue and I was very fortunate that there was another group there on this very remote lake that uh, came to the aid of us and helped Debbie uh, get me out of there and in fact I ended up being airlifted out of, out of that particular lake it was okay it was just a little bit too much sun um, but it was just an incredible experience and at the time I was extremely proud to be a Canadian, and I felt it was a reflection of Canadians coming together, complete strangers, and helping. Fast forward to Canada Day 2021, just last, last summer. Some five weeks after 215 children were found in Kamloops. Certainly not so proud to be Canadian at that time. In fact, somewhat shamed. And I cannot imagine the pain and the anguish and the anger felt by Indigenous communities across Canada upon those findings. I do feel that it has sparked the fire, though, to, be the, to hear the truth. The truth needs to be told and the truth needs to be heard. And then hopefully action taken once the truth is understood. Forest Ontario is committed to assisting with reconciliation community tree plants, committed to moving forward with events like this, the healing place. What a journey it's been. As Larry was describing it earlier, we started it probably well over, well, it was over a couple of years ago. And it has been an incredible learning experience right from the start. Learning what, what indigenous communities mean, what is important, and in part, in, in particular, bringing communities together in events like this. And what better opportunities for people to start to heal than bringing indigenous communities together, non-indigenous communities together, planting trees with this particular site, extremely well thought out of what those trees mean, but bringing people together to learn, to understand, to heal the earth through the planting of trees and to heal the communities by working together. So I want to thank all of you for being here today. Certainly the partners, OPG, South Nation, Plenty Canada, Mohawks of Akwesasne as the primary partners of this whole event that we've been moving forward with. And as I said, I look forward as Forest Ontario to continue to work towards letting the truth be told, working towards letting the truth be heard, taking action to make sure that we work towards reconciliation. Thank you very much. So anyone that wants to do a tobacco offering is welcome to come. We have tobacco. If you have your own tobacco, you're free to come and do it. 
Uh, we didn't bring a, a spot to burn it actually, but what we can do is we can place it onto the center rock. So anybody that would like to do that, come to the eastern door and come grab some tobacco. Think about your thoughts that you want to put forward and then place it into the center and then come back out and let the next person go. So anybody that would like to do so, just come and get some tobacco. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Thanks for sticking in. Um, we will all go together to drop some tobacco. <laughs> so we're gonna walk through the eastern door together and drop some tobacco in the case. Say hello to the doggy, everyone. Her name's Coda. <laughs> oh, yes, I can. Thank you. Send your thoughts in here, everyone. We're manifesting them for you. Some trees. Oh, oh, <laughs> How many people are on right now? Who do we got? We've got eight people watching the stream watching right now. Yeah, there's people watching you. We're just gonna film Martina as we wait in line. <laughs> Send more thoughts. I don't feel enough. <laughs> Getting a little view of the healing place, the children's garden. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I won't pan it all around right now because I don't want to film everyone because they're. <laughs> I just can't really see them. You can see some of the trees that are gonna get planted. There's the children's garden over there. We're going to show it in more detail. We're going to show it in more detail later. <laughs> I, I don't know how well you can uh, hear me. <laughs> Let folks know in the chat that Sarah has agreed to give us a special private tour of the children's mm, garden. Right. Yeah, so we're definitely going to get a tour of the children's garden after. Say hi, Joanna. Hi. <laughs> 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 Nice. Some gooseberry we think here. Yeah, we're sort of in the, we're walking through the, I don't know exactly what it's called, this, the sacred garden in the center. Following Martina. <laughs> We 
get a tour of the healing place? Or the... <laughs> we are at the healing I mean, yes, the healing place. The children's garden. So we're here, looking at the children's garden. Oh, yeah, no, no worries. Yeah, we're gonna say hi to Sarah here, who designed and organized all of this. I'll try to lift you up so you can see the whole layout. <laughs> so what are we looking at here, Martina? So here we got a Jerusalem artichoke. Ooh. AKA Can you tell us the story of that, Martina? <laughs> yes, I can, Emily. So the Jerusalem artichokes. Interesting story because they're also known as the original Algonquin potatoes. They do not have starch, so they're not like actual potatoes, but somewhere along the lines, the Algonquins lost their trademark. And people were like, these kind of look like artichokes from Jerusalem. And so now they're called Jerusalem artichokes, but Algonquin potatoes. That's the real OG <laughs> Jerusalem artichokes. There you go. If you know, you know. <laughs> Sarah, do you have a few moments? Yes. <laughs> so, say hi to the live stream. Hi. This is Sarah. Uh, would you like to just tell us a little bit about the children's garden? I know you gave a little introduction yeah. earlier that we saw. So the, the theme that we went with was um, butterflies, because uh, butterflies are associated with children and childhood uh, for Algonquin people, and I think for Mohawk as well. Um, so we laid it out shaped like a butterfly, and uh, a lot of the plant species are pollinator species, so it is a butterfly garden that attracts butterflies. Um, and then the other thing that butterflies represent is like transformation, and that's what we're hoping the healing place will be, is a place of transforming like kind of grief into healing. Um, what else? Um, so one of the species that we have in here is actually um, butterfly milkweed which is a really bright orange, which ties in with like orange shirt day. Um, and then we've placed the plants in a way that I hope will be appealing for children because we want it to be a space for children to come to as well. So we've got like the narrow paths, which are really nice for little kids for exploring. And I've put the, our wild strawberry plants here um, on the sides of the narrow path so that hopefully it'll be a little treasure that kids can find <laughs> when they come to visit. A lot of the plants here can be made into various teas, and then we have a couple of um, trees over there, which are, I can never remember, the Acaria, which I think is uh, I can't remember. Joanna, Joanna's running around the other side to tell us what kind of trees we've got there. <laughs> hardy walnut or hardy, hardy hazelnut? Pecan. Hardy pecan. Hardy pecan. Okay. <laughs> They're both the same? Yeah. yeah. Cool. And historically, we don't grow here, um, but because of climate change, uh, there's something that normally grows a little south of here in the Carolinian, but because of climate change and the warmer weather, they're starting to be able to grow here. So we planted them here, anticipating that in a few years' time, it'll be a really suitable habitat for them, and they'll do really well. Yeah. Cool. That's great. <laughs> Uh, did you want to tell us about any of the other plants? Is that sweet grass over there? Yes, yeah, so we do have sweet grass in the middle. <laughs> um, so, usually in the spring and summer, sweet grass will be picked from like the base where it's all white. And then while it's still fresh, it gets braided into braids, uh, usually using seven strands of grass per like chunk of braid, um, so then you end up with 21 strings per braid, and then it's dried and it's used for, you can make it into a tea, uh, it's used for smudging, it's one of the four sacred medicines, um, and it's associated with, uh, I believe, summertime, and uh, one of the lessons of sweetgrass is that it's gentle and you're, you should try to live like that, where you're soft and gentle and you're able to bend and move uh, with the environment uh, without breaking. Oh, yeah, for sure. And we also consider it the hair of Mother Earth. So it's something that we try to like, take really good care of and think about the planet while we're handling it and planting it. Thanks. Can you see the lettering okay? 
<laughs> Sorry, I thought Martina was talking yeah. to us, but she's not. And then I guess I can talk about what's behind the sweetgrass. Yeah, what else do we have here? So behind the sweetgrass, there's two different kinds of echinacea. Uh, there's light purple and dark purple. And then just in front of it here, we have uh, wild bergamot, which is a really beautiful smelling plant. It's kind of spicy and peppery, and it has really pretty um, purple and pink flowers that uh, are really popular for bees. And it makes a really nice tea. Very cool. All right, are there any others that you'd like to, to tell us about? Uh, Not to take up all your time. But. Um, a lot of diversity. Yeah, there's yeah. lots of stuff here. Yeah, there's a huge mix. Um, there's a few different grasses because um, this is naturally like a grassland area. So we've got prairie drop seed, um, Indian grass, along with the sweet grass, and I think there's another type of drop seed that I can't remember. And then we have wild ginger, which isn't too much to look at right now because it's pretty much done for the year. <laughs> but uh, there it is. the roots of that uh, make a nice tea. It kind of more or less tastes like ginger. Um, we also have blood root, which again, there's not too much to look at. Mm -hmm. It's pretty much done. It's a spring flower. It's called blood root because when you, you break the roots open, you can see one leaf there. <laughs> they, uh, they ooze like a really dark red color that looks like blood, and you can use it for actually doing natural dyes. Um, and then we also have here bunchberry, which is a really nice spring flower that has uh, little red berries on it. And I can't remember off the top of my head what that gets used for. <laughs> That's okay, there's so many different things here. <laughs> it's gonna be beautiful. The rest is a mix of asters and sunflowers as well. Awesome, and so we've got, this is one, is this one of the wings of the butterfly? Yeah, so if you want to find it. Middle path is the body, and up there is like the, the head, and then the sweet grass is kind of laid out to be the antennas in like a U shape, mm -hmm. and then the wings come out to the feathers. Beautiful. Well, it looks like it's gonna be awesome. Thank you for the tour. So, thank you, Sarah. <laughs> Everyone silently in the chat. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna bring you guys back to see Joanna and Martina. <laughs> we have a very special announcement to make. This, um, inspired by this beautiful sweet grass here. Um, over the course of the program, we will be inviting all participants to, uh, to join us in a sweet grass braiding workshop. You're going to be sent um, some beautiful strands of sweet grass and learn from Nancy McDermott uh, Larry McDermott's partner. So uh, it's going to be a really special uh, workshop. It's something we've done before and we are offering this to all of the participants of the program free of charge. So that's why we asked for your mailing addresses. I'm very excited about this. <laughs> it was for not sketchy reasons that we asked for your address. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so we can send you guys some sweet grass. And it smells so good. And then you're going to get to participate in the workshop and learn how to braid it. <laughs> Too bad we don't have smell-o-vision. <laughs> We're almost there. Almost. <laughs> and that will, be, uh, that will contribute to a part of the program uh, around uh, gift exchange, which is very important to ethical space. So more details to come, but uh, that's just been confirmed and we will be setting a date and time and sharing with you all in the coming weeks. Now, I know. Right. <laughs> we could see who else we might be able to approach. Mm -hmm. We wanna we wanna get you guys to be able to have some one-sided conversations, yeah, I guess, with yeah. a couple of the the people involved in the creation of the healing place. So uh, everyone's kind of scattered around, just chatting right now. So we're going to go and see who we can find. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Run an adventure, guys. <laughs> oh, 
Ooh. Pig nut hickory. Pig nut hickory. You can ask Chris about this. I'm Get sure a little bit of a view. Ooh, nice big one. And you'll see there's lots of cedar trees. So there's cedar trees all around in a circle around the entire healing place. These are some of the 13, the 13 grandmother, grandmother, grandfather teachings. We're hopefully going to get to talk to Chris and he will be able to tell us all about the different paths. Ooh. First though, we're gonna try to talk to Larry McDermott. We're going to follow Joanna to go out the eastern door of the ceremony area. Are we, Joanna, are we leaving the right way? Or? Okay, we're not leaving, we're not leaving. Never mind, yes, he's right here, sorry. I didn't see him. <laughs> I'm so just Larry's filming Joanna to, here. Uh, Larry's actually about to head off for some meetings, so he's going to need to leave early. And we want to catch him before he has to go. So uh, for those of you who don't know, Larry McDermott is uh, the executive director of Plenty Canada. And uh, this program that you guys are a part of was inspired by some work that was done on... Uh, Canada Pathway 1. <laughs> uh, you can read more about it. We will be telling you more about that. And that's a process that Larry was heavily involved in. So this whole program is basically inspired by some of Larry's work. Yeah. So yes. we're going to talk to him. <laughs> and in fact, actually, Larry is uh, speaking to one of the drummers uh, who are part of uh, the drumming circle uh, that was with us today. And one of those drummers, Barry Sarazin, um, was uh, part of the, one of the final ceremonies for the Pathways to Target One um, process at the national level. So um, both Larry and, and Barry were very much involved in, in that. And it's quite nice as well that we, uh, we have the drum. You could do a pan, I think, of the drum. Sure, I'll it's quite beautiful. stop filming Joanna here. I'll get just a shot without the chairs in the way. Yeah, it's very beautiful. Um, that actually uh, both yourself and uh, Barry Sarazen, I know for sure, were involved in the, uh, one of the ceremonies for Pathways to Target One. Oh yeah. That little space program. And yeah. I saw the drum and it looks a lot like the drum that I saw in the photos. Is it the same one? Yep. Wow. And what's Rick Hill going to be telling us about? Uh, so Rick's a historian, right? Yeah. But, uh, Rick has done a lot of work. I uh, hit when um, the Smithsonian Museum of the American Indian was created. He was one of the experts uh, brought in. Uh, he, he does a lot of work uh, in museums, but in telling. Uh, History from um, uh, a, shall we say, a two-eyed seeing perspective, and uh, a great storyteller. He's a lot of fun to listen to. He's, he's, he's uh, knowledgeable and, and funny and uh, pretty amazing. Hopefully, he gets a deer from that day, and then <laughs> they can talk from that perspective. <laughs> that would be cool. Did we get any questions from the chat? Let's check here and see. <laughs> Larry, maybe, you know, we've, we've tried to explain a little bit in, uh, in this live stream and the preceding video, sort of the idea of ethical space, but maybe this might be an opportunity to, to hear from you a little bit, your perspective on that and its importance. Well, credit where credit is due. It's a concept that was created by a Cree elder, Willie Ermine, uh, who's a professor at the uh, University of Saskatchewan, uh, but also 
also further uh, developed by Dr. Reg Groshu, Blackfoot elder, who is the lead elder in Pathways 1, Canada's uh, response to the Convention on Biological Diversity, with mindful also of the Convention on Climate Change. Um, simply put, uh, and there's a, a box in the National Advisory Panel's uh, report called Canada's Conservation Vision. Uh, in, the in the box, it basically says, when two very different societies come together, it's a way of negotiating how you're going to uh, work together. Uh, so in this situation in Canada with Indigenous peoples, it brings in the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples, the uh, 94 Calls to Action of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, but also recognizes oral Indigenous governance along with Western uh, governance. And what that used, what that meant in Pathways 1 is, the first couple of days, we didn't talk about what was going in the report at all. We talked about the seven gifts, the seven grandmother-grandfather teachings. We talked about creating accommodation and uh, building the cross-cultural capacity to work together. It doesn't happen on automatic pilot. It happens consciously, it happens with training. And what I'm seeing is uh, one of the biggest impediments to being able to work together is assuming the Western Cappuccino Express works in all cases. No, it's not a de facto way of uh, governance. Accommodation has to be made. Uh, Dr. Croshu talked about that at our annual celebration, which is uh, March 18th every year. Yeah, that he's still seeing kind of like Greta Thunberg. You know, nice words, yada, 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 but not real action. And so that, that accommodation is still a bit of a, a struggle. That, for, to operate in ethical space, people have to slow down and negotiate appropriate accommodation for, for both eyes. Thank you very much for that. <laughs> we, uh, we gave a very short introduction in our introduction video, but I think that uh, that makes it a lot more clear than probably what we did. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, thank you so much for talking with us, Larry. <laughs> Say bye, Larry. <laughs> bye, Larry. <laughs> Here, we'll say hi to the little doggy. Hi, hi, Kona. <laughs> say hi to the live stream. <laughs> so, Rob, we have a number of youth who are part of um, our new ethical space youth training program. And uh, what, what that tro program is actually based off of some of the things that Larry has shared with the, the collective working on the healing place. And um, yeah, I just wonder if you have any kind of personal thoughts in your history of working oh, in conservation in terms of, you know, oh, the, the process of this particular project. If there's anything that stands out to you or... No pressure. <laughs> you showed some great work. Uh, yeah, so so definitely, you know, obviously this has been just an incredible learning process. I mean, so many people have been involved. Um, in particular, I think it's been the yeah. journey to yeah. get to today, yeah. and certainly. Sure, we're gonna we're gonna move away from this other conversation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's all right. We're uh, we're mobile here. We're gonna. It's not truly live stream, right? Like this is. <laughs> no, they're, 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 they're We've got seven people watching. Seven people. All right. Yep. Okay, well, it is true. Yep, yep, awesome. yep. <laughs> so, yeah, so, so anyway, it has been an incredible journey. Um, as I said in my previous uh, comments, just the, the learning, certainly my learning as we've gone through this process. I think, the, uh, as Larry talked about, too, I see and more the Western culture of how to do things. It was where we started uh, prior to getting to where we are today. And I think through this engagement, we've learned a lot about how to properly communicate, how to ensure good governance within the structure that we're working in. And so all of that, I think, has brought us to, obviously, today's event. 
to the healing place that we have and where we can go in the future and have a place for people to go to, to reflect, to heal, to learn. And I think, you know, when we start talking about youth uh, in particular, what a great opportunity for, for those youth to come out and start to realize, you know, the truths that are out there, the truths of, of, our, of the history of Indigenous communities across Canada and the tragedies, of course, of what have occurred. But, and then what can we do beyond that to heal and to reconcile? So I think it's a, it's a great start with this. I hope that you can get busloads of, of uh, youth coming out to listen to folks like Chris and Larry and others that are so knowledgeable in, in, how, in the ways of engagement in the wage of community living. So I think that would be, that would be amazing if we could get more people out here. To come. Well, we have one. <laughs> there you, you, I can't tell with the glasses. Yeah, okay. Can we bring you on to our live stream? Yeah, I had showed her for a second earlier, kind of by accident, and we just said, hi, Ely. Yes. Well, hello to the, the seven others that are with us. It's really too bad you guys couldn't be here today because it's an incredible experience to actually be here on the land and get more of like a, a 3D view because everything seems to land out so specifically oh, oh. lessons and relations with every tree that was planted and I'm really looking forward to learn more about how this space was planned and organized and the meaning behind it. So I think we'll more of that today. Um, yeah, looking forward to getting to know more of the participants with our discussions and future workshops and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Thank Thanks, Ely. <laughs> Impromptu interviews here. Yes. Let's see who else we can find. I'll try to give them a few seconds head start. We're going to go look at this tree. What have we got here, Martina? A blank. Oh, it's a blank. Oh, I love that. My couch. favorite Probably species. No leaves or anything on it, right? Yeah. I'm sure Chris would be able to tell us. Maybe we have some tree experts in our youth uh, cohort here, and they can tell us. We've got nice, one like silver kind of bark. One to little it. kind of berry, dried berry mm, left. Basswood. Is it a basswood? <laughs> Guys, is this a basswood? That's a good question, tree? Martina. <laughs> oh, let's use seek. Haha. -ha. Uh, now that is a good app. It's uh, seek. It's yes. tricky with. Uh, with trees sometimes, but uh, mm -hmm. that's okay. Let's see if we can seek it, guys. <laughs> We're gonna see if Martina no, can figure it out. <laughs> yeah, there are cedar, uh, cedar all around the circle. There's lots of them. They smell great. They're the um... one of the four sacred medicines. Yes. And I believe that path, that circle, is the grandmother path. And then the great grandmother and grandfather paths, which represent the moons. Mm -hmm. We have we have a few different paths here around the healing place, and hopefully. Uh, Hopefully we're going to get Chris to talk to us about that because he knows all about all of it. <laughs> He's a very knowledgeable guy. Let's seek this one. It has leaves. That one has a label. We're going to oh, go look at the label, next maybe. tree. It's a nice one. Oh, Jesus, oh, trying not to trip yeah. here. We almost lost our cameraman. <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. American hazelnut. Beautiful. The sky is really clearing up. We've got a beautiful blue sky. Show it to all of you. <laughs> yeah, so there's our hazelnut. And so this is something that's getting planted today. You can see it's not actually planted yet. It's just uh, waiting to get fully put into the ground. It's another blank. So I'm not sure what it is to be honest with you. <laughs> So these are uh, one of the bigger trees we've got here. We've got some spruce already here, some of these large ones. 
And I know we've got a red spruce down over there. Hopefully we'll get to look at it. And isn't there, isn't that a Manitoba maple that is on site? Yes, there's uh, that tree kind of in the center there, the sort of tallest one just barely. Yeah, that one is a Manitoba maple. Um, so Manitoba maple is, some people say, technically an invasive species because it's not native necessarily to this area, but it's, uh, it's, it's native to Canada, just not necessarily right here. And it's actually, uh, it's also a culturally significant species for some indigenous groups. Uh, it's used in medicine bundles, so yeah can say it's invasive but uh, a lot of indigenous people would probably tell you to leave it alone and uh, so there it is it's beautiful anyways <laughs> another pan here of all the nice big trees See Sarah over there working away on the children's garden. Working hard. It's gonna be so beautiful. <laughs> Hi, Joanna. <laughs> I was just getting a long shot of Sarah. Are you live streaming right now? All right, yeah, in two minutes. I have to get everybody going tree planting. All right, all right. We've got Chris for two minutes here. And uh, as you would have seen during the, the speaker's lineup, uh, Chris spoke uh, about uh, the layout and the, the intention behind uh, this site here. And um, are there uh, any particular uh, plants or species that uh, you'd like to highlight to the, <laughs> the uh, youth participants who are online right now? Um, yeah, there are a couple of the big ones. Uh, we have the, the white cedar, which, which is one of the four sacred medicines. Um, when we look at the four directions, the cedar's in the south. Um, so, you know, but it is one of the four sacred medicines. So we have the, the sweet grass, cedar, sage, and tobacco. Um, right now we have the sweet grass that's going to be going in. Sage will be coming back in the springtime to put some sage in. And the cedar's already growing. So that's the nice thing is that'll continue. Uh, the other thing, when we look in the four directions, they have very specific meaning. So with the Mohawk people and the Algonquin people, we have very similar things uh, of this tree species that are important to us for specific reasons. So that's what we've chosen. We've chosen uh, the sugar maple for the east because it's the first medicine of the year. And out of respect for the Mohawk, we've put the white pine in the western door. And the white pine for them is the tree of peace. So they would have liked to seen it in the center, but when we look at a traditional medicine wheel, there's nothing in the center because that's where the human is supposed to be focused, is in the center talking to the creator. But they did agree to put it in the western door as we're being in the east, they'd be in the west to, to show that we're equal and we're balanced. So that's, those are the two most unique species here that have really important value to the, to the communities specifically for that but the rest of them are all traditional resources we would use whether it's traditional food uh, traditional medicines so we have the, the different nut species we have shag bark hickory we have uh, pig nut hickory we have shell bark hickory they were all edible it's pure protein uh, we also have walnuts butternut uh, we have uh, beech we have hazelnuts so all of those nuts were utilized because it's just when it's dried it could last a long time and it could be pounded into a flour and stored for years and it was just a matter of mixing it with something to rehydrate it and make it more palatable but it was it was like a base for everything so even for like pemmican nuts were, were a big process of that um, the rest of the species we have here like white birch they were important for us for especially to the to the Anishinaabe people it was it was very important for us for that was our, our resource for water transportation and shelter uh, the Haudenosaunee or the Mohawk people not so much but they still utilized it, it has lots of medicinal values um, that are still used today by both communities so when we look at those species that's what we're looking at uh, were those things and that's why they've been planted here it's, it's so that 
it, it represents the best of all of us from this region and, and it shows how we're so much similar and how you know there may be a little bit of difference on how we see these species but that they were very very important for our everyday livelihood and it's the same when we look at the flowers the the flower bed that we're putting in um, the, the medicinal values are very very similar between our communities and so you know we're not going to teach people how to use them but that the fact that they're here because they were a value to our people and now it's up to the people to go back to their elders and say hey what was what did you guys use the purple coneflower for how did we use that how did what medicine did we make with that because we can't share that with everybody so the elders will be very specific on what they'll tell you and what they'll teach you about those medicines so you don't hurt yourself or kill yourself because a lot of these plants are toxic and if we don't do it properly it's not very nice so it's much like acorns most people don't realize that they're edible they're atrocious if you try and eat one right now but when they're boiled a few times and you take that tannic acid out of them they become just like a nut it's like just pure protein so it's very tasteful okay, so and very good so uh, that's what the, the, that's planning. about about so, so um, uh, already set up for I don't know what more you'd like to know about it but I mean that was phenomenal that was really great thank you Chris thanks um, thanks for asking I'm glad you guys came out and you know make sure you interview each other yeah. not just me <laughs> <laughs> so VIPs make, make sure you pick on Sarah too we already oh, did gosh, we already yeah. did <laughs> we got her <laughs> but you know like talk talk with the other elders that are here by all means and, and you know talk to them about about the garden what they think and what what's unique about it in their eyes because there's everybody has something to teach us whether it's through our communities or somebody else's or even non-native communities we have things to learn that we can share with each other so it's a perfect spot miigwech 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 chris miigwech <laughs> Now Chris is going to teach everyone how to plant trees properly. Uh huh. Yeah, the tree planting is going to be starting here. Everyone's getting their shovels out. So, uh, since this is going on right now, we'll let you see. We'll let you see what's going on here with the tree planting. Caliper trees, there's about five of them. Two are over here. The white, one here, and one over here to plant. They're already set into place. It's just a matter of back filling in and stomping the dirt as we do to make sure we get all the air pockets up. Other than that, those could go over and help Sarah. The pots are set where she wants them. She's a real slave driver. So if you go in there, be prepared to work. <laughs> and you grab your lunch and then go do what you want to do. But you can't leave until you plant at least one tree. <laughs> for, for those of you on the live stream, Sarah is Chris's daughter, so that's what the gentle ribbing is all about. <laughs> maybe I wonder um, if uh, tree planting is underway, maybe uh, similar to the offering of tobacco. Could we maybe plant a tree together with the live stream? <laughs> sure, we can do that since everyone's... Uh, Getting busy with that now, that could be nice. <laughs> We're making this as interactive as possible for you guys. Martina, I'm gonna I'm gonna film you play by play. Let's grab a shovel and then we will put a tree in a hole. Good plan. Pretty solid plan. Oh, we could probably just grab one of these. Yeah, I think I think our Plenty Canada ones are all against that car there. <laughs> if you want one, doesn't really matter. Ooh, I like this one the best. Okay, we've got our our best green shovel green shovel trendy. here. Chose a shovel. Look at the handle. Ooh, it looks ergonomic. It's for <laughs> we got our pick of the shovels here. <laughs> We're planting a tree on the live stream. <laughs> Do you want me to hold it for you? This is Jenna. Say hi to the live stream, Jenna. Hello, everybody. <laughs> I guess we just kind of... I feel like I'm not making this a good hole for a tree. I think it's a good hole. I mean, it's pretty much in there. Did we just have to fill it in? 
I'm just, yeah, we'll, we'll in the, yep. Clearly this is going well. We're amateur tree planters, guys. Trying not to we are cover. great tree planters. <laughs> yeah, maybe yeah, just dig all the dig all the nice topsoil into the the area. It's standing. That's what we want. The tree is standing. I'll fill in this little hole. Does it look beautiful yet? It looks beautiful. Good job, Matthew. All right. <laughs> he did say to do that, so you're I doing it right. Make sure it's good. Tony <laughs> A Gregoska de Dorf went winning and got Nigula don a debt no ladders ne, or did that a goa, Tony or Tohak ne got Nigula, to. A Gregoska de Dorf went winning and got Nigula don a debt no ladders ne, a Gael in a goa lage, Tony or Tohak ne got Nigula, to. A Gregoska de Dorf went winning and got Nigula don a debt no ladders ne, La Diwellas, Tony or Tohak ne got Nigula, to. A Gregoska de Dorf went winning and got Nigula than a debt in a ladder's nest and got Gia Yokineko Golaqua, Tony or Tohak Negonigula, to. A Gregoska de Dorf went winning and got Nigula than a debt in a ladder's nest. A sort of necker Golaqua, Tony or Tok Negonigula, to. A Gregoska de Dorf went winning and got Nigula than a debt in a ladder's nest, or Gino Golunio, Tony or Tohak Negonigula, to. A Gregoska de Dorf went winning and got Nigula than a debt in a ladder's neck, I only knew Gwedge, Tony or Tohak Negonigula, to. A Gregoska de Dorf went winning and got Nigula than a debt in a ladder's nest, and got a diesel, Tony or Tohak Negonigula, to. Ono, Wedeli Wale, Waho, Hodo, Nua, when he's a lade, Doga, or Teno, say I'm got Nigula Halo, Ize, Gine, Izawada, Suntelo, Egadi, Tony or Tohak Negonigula, to. Yawa. So, just kind of wanted to give you a little bit more context on what the Ohandagaliwa Dakwa is. It's the words that come before all else, and we give them before every important meeting and after every important meeting. And what I what I describe for you, um, when I say Aguego Aska de Dawafwe Nuni, this means that we're all bringing our minds together to acknowledge an aspect of our relationship. And then when I say Tony Othohak Neguanigula, and the response to that is To, which is I agree. Um, that our minds are now one. And what I went through was, I went through the people were the first ones I acknowledged. Then I acknowledged Mother Earth. I acknowledged the, the waters, the fish, the roots, uh, the plants, the medicines, the food plants, um, the animals, the trees, the birds, uh, the thunderers, the four winds, the sun, uh, the moon, the stars, our four sacred teachers, and then creator. And so what we're doing is really acknowledging that relational network that we have and that we need to be, that we have roles and responsibilities to them. And so by opening and closing our meetings with this, um, we're keeping them in our thoughts and all of our decision making, how we choose to conduct ourselves in those environments. Um, and one of my favorite stories about this was, I remember I was at a meeting with the EPA and one of my good friends, Sati Yogwa, came in and she was about nine months pregnant and gave the Ohanda Galuadakwa to the whole team. And she talked about what it meant. And the reason that we do it is to bring our minds together into this space, to be present, um, to arrive here together. So you're not thinking about the grocery list. You're not thinking about what we're having for dinner. Your mind is here, present, and, and ready to work, to be, um, to be here and to make those decisions. 
And so I, I often go back to her and think about those lessons that she taught me. She's one of my favorite teachers and friends. Um, and so I'm really appreciative that we opened in a good way. And so by closing, we've now closed the space. You are all free to release your minds of the healing place and go back to your lives. Probably won't, but <laughs> um, I hope that this um, this time was as good for you as it was for me, as I said at the beginning. So, Nyawa, yo. Yo.